Hi everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are, I'm your host, Dr. Heather Shah. On behalf of Calvas, I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today. We have another very interesting topic, and I'm really honored to welcome and introduce our distinguished guest speaker, who is going to talk about the digital transformation in hospitality industry. We are now experiencing the fourth industrial revolution, a period marked by emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, robotics, virtual reality, the internet of things, and the fifth generation wireless technology. Moreover, this period has significantly transformed our hospitality industry and will continue to do so. So indeed, the recent COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated the digital transformation, resulting in a widening technology-mediated customer experience. So indeed, a very interesting topic, and I'm sure uh, in this session, you are going to learn new amazing things, the best insights about all these things as we have an expert with us in today's this session. So stay tuned because an amazing stuff are coming ahead in this session. So before we start, I would like to thank Alvas for arranging such enlightenment sessions for their support and providing such a wonderful platform. The aim of Alvas is to give you the opportunity to connect and interact with world-renowned speakers, academic leaders, teachers, authors, researchers, experts, professionals, and businessmen to learn from their experiences, recommendations, suggestions, and tips, which will create an impact and will enable you to learn and develop yourself in order to grow and transform individually, as well as to contribute to the world in a positive way. As our slogan is, come learn and share knowledge. So today we have an amazing person as a guest, he is internationally known and recognized speaker, a multi-dynamic person with, a, with an amazing, great qualities, having vast experience and exposure. He is a great human being and always ready to contribute to the world in a positive way. So let me introduce him formally. He is an associate professor from the School of Hospitality, Tourism and Events and associate director, Human Capital Development of the Center for Research and Innovation in Tourism. Faculty of Social Sciences and Leisure Management, Taylor's University, Malaysia, who has embraced the technology as a part of his teaching and learning pedagogy and continuously empowers to innovate himself with the latest development of technology in order to meet the changing needs of today's learner. He has taken the mandate and made it as personal inspiration on striving to broaden his ability in the area of technology integration in the classroom his uh, innovation and transformation in teaching and learning due to uh, during the pandemic is well recognized by awarding him as one of the uh, taylor's distinguished e-learning educator class of 2021 moreover he has also received the title of ade apple distinguished educator class offered 2015 a global community of educators on leader recognized for doing his uh, amazing things with the Apple technology in and out of the class. He served as the cluster head of teaching and learning in so school of to execute various projects and student center learning. He also appointed, uh, he has also been appointed as the visiting professor for the uh, Laysam of the Philippine University, um, uh, Manila and the University of Santo Thomas, Philippines and advisory member of universities in uh, India, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore. In addition to that, he won the uh, exemplary uh, meritorious, uh, the meritorious academic staff award for his transformation and training restaurants from traditional to digital bronze uh, medal in the IUCEL 2018 and 2017, silver medal in I, double I, UCL 2016 and NUCL 2015 for his innovation in teaching and learning practices. He shares his learning experiences through a series of training sessions for staff as a contribution to the overall development of the academia world. He has also, uh, he has also uh, presented and published various research papers in international and national conferences. He is also actively publishing his research and innovation in WSCI and Scopus Index Journals. Currently, he, uh, he leads some borderless projects under the school as well as CRIT to create culture of care and collaboration among the academia and industry partners in the region. 
His recent research projects at the Taylor University include the service innovation, augmented and virtual reality, artificial intelligence, the hospitality and restaurant industry, the higher education. He, uh, he also contributed to the university as a resource person, panelist and moderators in international conferences panel discussion and forum. In 2019, he received the best paper award for his research towards the integration of augmented reality into dining space and gold medal for his teaching innovation in the International University e-learning carnival 2019 in Sarawak, Malaysia. In the recent year, he got a um, well-recognized trainer come keynote speaker in the Philippines, India, Indonesia, and Malaysia. For his current research in industry revolution 4.0, service innovation in hospitality 4.0, and uh, teaching innovation towards transformation in the education and industry sector. In addition to that, he has also expert. Uh, he has the expertise in the innovation pedagogical approaches, that is borderless classroom, virtual, contactless classrooms, and lead person for various international collaborative project and benchmark marking projects and finally a strong person with a great networking skills last but not the least he is a wonderful speaker author teacher researcher professional and above everything he's a great human being so please help me in welcoming our guest dr kendapan bala subramaniam uh, welcome to kalwas platform and thank you very much for joining us Hey, there's Sean, for a Thank very you. long introduction and really, I think your introduction itself is very pleasing, shows the warm hospitality from Pakistan. So I also would like to thank you for inviting me to this wonderful platform uh, to share my knowledge at the same time to learn more during the interaction with the participants in the Q&A time. I also take this opportunity to thank uh, the Calvas channel uh, with a very interesting tagline, come learn and share knowledge, because I think sharing is caring and we all should learn every day, every time with everyone. Yes. Uh, thank so, you yeah, I think the topic A given to me. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. I think the topic and, uh, we, we used to see you while... Uh, uh, doing the different contribution to the world, which is so great. We congratulate you what you are doing and particularly your recent uh, contribution, recent innovation uh, in the name of Bond. Uh, we will be talking at the end of this session because that is an amazing step towards another what you refer to sharing is caring. So that's so amazing. So uh, just a, a reminder to the audience that uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kendrapan will be presenting and he would leave the answer uh, the leave time for the question and answer session at the end of the session. So over to you, Prof. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm lacking, but I'm, I'm ensuring that my audio is quite smooth. Yeah. Yes, it's very much clear, very audible, Prof. And uh, we can hear you and we Let can see you. Start in sharing my screen. Yes, please. Okay, sure. Just give me a moment. I'm going to share my screen. So now I'm sure people can see my screen. Yes, Prof, it's visible. Okay. Okay. Since we are going to talk about the digitalization, let me start my session being in the afternoon in Malay, I think in Pakistan, after lunch. Let's start the session with a short video about the innovations happen in terms of technology.
Okay, so this video really explains us that technology digitalization is not a standalone. The digitalization transformation should come along with the innovation. Okay, let me move on. Yeah, I think the topic is digital transformation in the hospitality industry. Let me go to the hospitality industry in a nutshell. Uh, of course, whenever we talk about hospitality industry, it's always very glamorous, right? So in terms of airlines, when you see the cabin crew, when you see the crews, uh, which we call moving city, cash news, maybe shopping mall, a lot of food courts, innovations, fine dining restaurants, a lot of innovation. So always hospitality is nothing but a lot of innovation and digitalization over a long period of decades. But I'm going to talk a little bit, start my session with, is digitalization important? If it is important, why? So I'm going to take two main important areas why the digitalization is very important. Number one, evolution of the internet of the things. I think initially, Dr. Haider was talking about industry revolution 4.0. But I think we are also started moving towards to the industry revolution 5.0, which we call hospitality 5.0, or even we call it a human augmentation era. In Japan, they call it as society 5.0. So when you see like pre-internet, human to human, but still there is a limited technology. For example, mobile, SMS, pages, right? So still there is a small integration of the technology even before the big revolution of the internet. Then we came to the WW, what we call 3W world. Okay, that's the internet of things. This is where people started using emails, informations, started using the internet for the entertainments and so many. Then we have moved the internet from the content because you need to understand that the evolutions is also changing the purpose of using the internet by the public, by the society itself, right? Started with just a basic in communication. Then they started using internet more for content. Then they started using the internet for services. That's what we call web 2.0, right? That means this is where the emerging of e-commerce, e-productivity. And from there, we went to the internet of people. This is where the people interaction in the internet started growing massively because of the development of so many other digitalization in the entire world. But what is happening nowadays? Machine to machine learning, internet of things. That means the total people's behavior, usage of the internet has been started growing in different branches, correct? It's not only for content or service, but now the internet is, I can say it's a part of our people's personal attachment. Why this all happened? Why this much of too much of uh, development and advancements of ICT, what we call information and communication technology? One reason it's because of the smartphone industry growth. Number two, because of the mobile services, what we call communication services. They started with 1G, first generation. Now we are moving towards to the 5G. That means the accessibility, the the coverage. Okay, if you ask me, like in the year 2000, having a mobile phone and internet in the mobile phone can be considered as luxury. Even in mid 2000s, we can say having a Wi Fi in your restaurant is considered luxury. But what is happening nowadays? Wi Fi has become a very minimum requirement, it's a part of your basic requirements, right? So this all happened because of even the glow Google. Google plays an important role. Even though they started a long time back, but 1998 onwards, I think they have taken a very drastic growth. They opened the market, right? They opened the access for the people. Sitting in one place, you can access the entire information through the search engine optimization. Not only that, how the travel industry has taken this advantage. Take an example of Booking.com, which is one of the highly used online travel agent booking platform nowadays, OTA. But it was started like 1996. 
if you ask in 2000 booking.com probably people hardly knows that but now everybody knows that because now it's available in 43 languages right according to 2020 data even there are a lot of functionality they are integrated not only that this is just a, a minute on the internet in 2020 a year back our people's engagement in the digital world during the pandemic we can say the people's engagement of probably the time they spend on the screen is two to three times higher than before pandemic it's according to the data statistic uh, data from the source visual capitalized it shows that the people's usage you can see all the social media everything the people's digital engagements have had a very big up curve not only that generation right why we need to focus on digitalization in the hospitality industry because 62 percentage prefer to spend their money on experience over buying something material so the generation z they give a lot of importance to experience but at the same time they want the experience in a digital form and they want to have a very accessibility mobility easily accessible so this can happen only when you are going to digitalize your entire business transformation not only that 80 10 percentage of people are more price conscious right so all this thing really have shifted our people's mindset not only that what is happening in the travel industry because whenever a people are traveling we break them into three components pre-trip during trip and post trip if you see this data from a mutual it shows that the post trip engagement was very high because of the digitalization because of the mobile apps okay, because of the platforms they use where people can review or probably can post their experience everything in different platforms and when you see this very closely the people are looking for synchronized digitalization that means i start my planning probably using some one device for example i use my laptop to do my booking but when i come to airport or when i come to hotel i want to do the check-in in my mobile smartphone so the easy transition the synchronization is very important and when i post trip i want more convenient i can i want me to give feedback anytime not like always going very traditional approach i have to stand in the checkout counter to do my feedback no i just want to move on but at the same time i can also do feedback in different areas social medias maybe through qr codes or probably like not you can do a push notification using beckons not only that the people's totally way of word of mouth search pattern have changed because of the digital world right if you take like 20 years back people used to talk to each other in a social gathering hey i was i'm planning for a trip to this particular destination can you give me some suggestions but are we doing that now we straight away go to the trip advisor or we go to the facebook group of destinations or instagrams or youtubes or google pixels so many ways we have totally have moved right not only that even the accommodation it's not like uh, making a phone call to the hotel or probably you are sending an email for booking now everything is app based and from the ota even further announcement last few years back was the Trivaco and hotel compile this means this particular apps even do more meta search optimization for you it will tell you if you're planning to book a hotel x in destination y the Trivago and hotel campaign will tell which ota is best to book that particular x and y destination to get a best rate so even in that a lot of meta search optimization have exploited right okay i'm going to talk a little bit on not only hospitality industry uh, recent day i tried to call it as heat okay the heat stands for hospitality events airlines and tourism industry and according to me digitalization will be successful only when you are going to blend 
the innovation and smart technology. I think pairing innovation and smart technology is very important to make your digital digitalization transformation more successful in the heat industry. So I just prepared the slides more on a global perspective and a lot of from Asian perspective, what really the heat industry have done during the COVID pandemic? What are the innovations? How the technology have really helped the people to collaborate, to sustain, to survive in the challenging times? Most of, most of the time when we talk about digitalization, what comes to people's mind is a smart hotel or maybe a contactless hotel experience or virtual key. That's what we call digital keys or smart keys. Contactless checking on online payments, right? So let's see what are the, those components. I think one of the best proverb told by Mr. Chisodhar Pichai, the CEO of Google and now also Alpha, he says AI is probably the most important thing humanity has ever worked on. When you see the history of the AI, it is not new. It was even in 1940s, they invented AI, but it was not well appreciated in the global market because of the technology greediness and people's mindset, or probably I can say uh, it's more towards people's adaptions. Right. So what is the AI, artificial intelligence, right? And the machine learning or the set to take customer service experience to the new level in the hospitality industry. So when you, we need to understand if you have a right technology in the right place, then only the customer experience can be enhanced. Since my competitor is doing some technology, it's not necessary. I have to implement. So it is very important for you to understand your market segmentation, integrate according to your contextual space, the innovations and the technology integration. That's why the personalization to an extent not possible earlier will become a reality. The hotel industry or others hospitality would use more of machine learning and AI to understand and serve customer better. In a simple terminology, understand your customer deeper. Deeper understanding your customer will help you to personalize their experience and prepare yourself before they want. This is nothing but forward way of thinking, like a resilience skills. So one of the main AI system, which we call chatbot. We all know that like chatbot uh, critically for customer support and help to improve the overall customer experience. And also we can call it as a virtual assistance to guide the customer. In those days in the restaurant, we used to call it as a dummy waiter, a side station, because that dummy waiter helps us to keep all the requirements for the waiter. Same thing, this virtual assistant acts as a supporting system virtually for you to engage with certain inquiries from the customer. That what we can call it as a, the first layer of engagement or what we call frequently asked questions. So they are so effective that almost 25% of customer service operation that are expected to use chatbot by 2021. So they say, in fact, there are over, there is a small error, 300,000 Chatbots on Facebook Messenger alone. Then you can see the potential of this AI and how many people has been using that. So we can always learn customer requests and provide relevant answers. So what the chatbot normally the AI assistance will do, it will try to engage at a minimum level or probably what we call frequently asked questions so that the human can focus more on understanding the customer. So hotel currently uses AI chatbot. Many hotels, but some of the famous hotels started using from the, what we call pioneers, one Las Vegas, Clarion Hotel in Stockholm, Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas, Edwardian Hotel, and of course, Enna Hotel in Japan is always well known for a lot of technology innovations. 
And what are the most commonly used AI chatbots in the industry? Uh, these are all some of the names of the chatbot. Propof, Mizuku, Spotify, Mobile Monkey, InPerson, Bolt 30. Not only that, the AI is also used in the airlines industry, especially like KLM. They launched, they call it as BB, Blue Boat, an artificial intelligent power tool that enables customer to search for and book flights through Messenger, Facebook Messenger. So they tried to integrate the Facebook Messenger with automation of chatbots. And Sam, it's another company which they have used the intelligent travel chatbots, which can give a lot of uh, travel gates or travel opinions for the travelers. The next important area, what we talk about the spot rooms, right? When you call about smart rooms, what is the need for it? Probably people might think, what is the reason for this digital, uh, probably what we call smart dose? It reduces the workload of front office men staff, improves the efficiency of the front office staff, reduces compliance from customer waiting for check-in, and facilitation the management of keys, better management of late arrivals, assuring guest safety security and should get satisfaction and loyalty not only that this whatever these seven points is more from an organizational business perspective when you see the slide below left below the perspective of guests it makes them to check in very quickly and very important getting to their room made as easy as possible very important there's no need to lose keys sometimes the, one of the biggest challenge we have losing our hotel keys so we have to carry all the time so i think this all becomes more seamless now so what are the different types of spot doors we have using spot passcodes fingerprint of course we do have a physical key ic card most commonly seen in the hotel so that where you can slot for the electricity power on and off then smartphone trends app based digital keys so where you can function the entire uh, hotel experience using the app, which Marriott and many hotels, they do it. What we call app culture, customer experience. So the next one of the biggest market, what we call, we started with augmented reality. Then we went to virtual reality. Then we have moved on to the mixed reality. Now a lot of extended realities are happening. So how this virtual reality, VR and AR has been used in the hotel industry for what purpose? When you see the top left, that hotel uses AR is just to give directions to the customer. So when they open the mobile, no need to look for the people where to go for the facilities and where to look for the functions happening in the hotel because the hotel sometimes very big Sometimes all the flows look same. We might get lost. So automatically this app will give a virtual direction. Okay, you head towards five meter, turn left, it's your swimming pool. And also it can indicate if you want to book spa or anything, you can do it. So augmented reality is really transforming the customer experience in different landscapes. But very important, I think I would like to highlight here, it's very important for every hotel when you are going to use this kind of technology innovations whether it is a virtual reality or augmented reality crafting the innovation based on your market there is a wording we always say service innovation will be successful only when your customers are innovative enough to accept those innovation. So it's very important. You need, you need to understand your customers' technology readiness and adaption. Right? So what are the things we use this immersive experience? Making the room come to life, expediting booking, making room come to like enhancing exposures and so many other areas. Not only that, not only the hotels, it has been also used in restaurants and what I can say probably in the fast food outlets. So when you see on the top left, 
it's nothing but a Korean restaurant which they use a gear VR gadget to restaurant. They want to stand out for a bit crowd. This was in 2016. So when the customer is going to dine in there, when they are going to drink the wine because they are going to wear this VR gadget, if the wine comes from probably Champagne region of France or probably Loire Valley or maybe like Napa Valley from US or maybe from Thailand or maybe India or any. So automatically they will try to, the moment you wear it, it will take you to the immersive experience. You are in a vineyard. You can feel that environment, the climate immersively and you can see that why we need to know all this immersive environment it helps you to predict certain sensory analysis. When you see the cold climate, automatically there are certain characteristics the grape will have that contributes to the wine. It goes same with our rice, uh, different fruits, right? When it is grown in tropical, when it is grown in different part of the world, because of the water, because of the humidity, because of the natural interactions and animal interaction, that crop or grain is going to be different in taste. When you take rice itself, there may be plenty of varieties, but still it's a rice. But how we are getting different fragments, it's all because. So it's all an immersive experience. So the one on the bottom left, it's an interesting concept. Why? Like it started in US. It's a 3D printing restaurant. But now this concept is highly used in the hotel industry, focusing on souvenirs. If you want to give a unique souvenir to your customers, example, you are getting a group of football players. Okay, they are staying in your hotel. So you want to give some souvenir to them. So you can create using the 3D printing, maybe a chocolate based souvenir with a nice coloring, crafting, representing their football team logos and everything. So which they are going to take, take, a, take away for from their hotel experience. So this is an interesting example on the right, augmented reality in Malaysian restaurant. We all aware that whenever we go to quick service restaurant, the fast food outlets, after we place the order, we always look to the counter, the number, when our numbers are coming, because we want the food very quickly. So what these people have done, Portuguese chicken burger, they want to reduce the traffic so they bring an augmented reality gamification where the customer can download and play this gamification based on the level of the completion, they get a discount. So we know like as a human psychology, we want to get more discount. So automatically people started engaging more in completion of the task rather than looking at to the counter. So it reduces their traffic, it reduces their compliance, and also it given a little bit a smoother flow of services. So not only that, let me touch a little bit on innovation during pandemic especially. So when you see how the technology has helped the lightning strikes okay, that has been used as a germ killing device in the rooms so that to show the safety to the customers. Robots earlier used mainly for the food delivery but now they also started customizing with their, uh, which can carry like five or six beverages. So a lot of transformation started to happening, especially like uh, light strikes, which can help you to disinfect and sanitize the entire hotel rooms and the robots, mobile robots. And very interesting concept on the left is a airport stay vacation from Hotel Sama Sama in Malaysia. This innovation, they started to come in. Okay, you come and stay in a hotel during the pandemic, but we will going to give you an experience of firefighter of the day. So they work with the airport authority in the airport because the runway is not highly used because of most of the airlines are paralyzed during the pandemic. So they really made it collaborative. Not only that, I think these are all some of the innovations happened. Uh, like the alt, the means what I can say, the revenue generating space has been converted as alternative revenue generation. But how it is connected to digitalization? When you have this, you have to promote using the digital platform. 
because people prefers to use digital platform share information nowadays in a social context not only that this restaurant in us they turned the restaurant itself like a movie theater drive through movie theater because they understand that all the movie theaters has been closed during pandemic so the people will come and park the car they use the app digitalization to place the order so all the payment everything is managed by the app but the people can experience the movie theater experience like older days we used to do that in the rural areas and that one on the top dutch restaurants they went more innovative like corona proof dining in a greenhouse then the mcdonald they come with a virtual proof restaurant so these are all some of the innovations that happened not only that lot of innovations during the pandemic the one on the left is from india sheraton hotel they come with a what we call a gorban baskets okay because people can not travel long distance like overseas but they want to travel in a short picnics so how to attract the market they come with a gorban brunch baskets which carries cutlery crockery bed sheet probably fresh fruits and a package but they went more environmental friendly you see they use the bamboo so they worked with a community like a indigenous community where they can become a revenue generation for them at the same time it benefits the hotel but how it is connected to digital still the order is placed through the digital platform the delivery they can scan everything through the digitalization so like that park and dine concepts and all this are new concepts let's move on to the leisure industry what was the digitalization because we are keep on talking about hospitality restaurant but same like vr ar robot shot board how it has really transformed the leisure industry destinations and events this is an classic example of in search of the lost royal palace of wu a cultural heritage sites so what they have done they created four different digital platforms vr telescope virtual reality vr beacon and simulator so it's going to cover different market but people's engage virtual even though the borders are physically closed but how i can promote my cultural heritage through the virtual space that's very important on the bot on the right uh, mixed reality experience in malaysia recreation center i have a short video to show in the next slide and this is how the vr simulator what it really does it helps the people to discover the majestic beauty of the new imperial city with a simulator model which visitors can see corners of the imperial city according to 2018 this is comes so automatically i cannot go virtually sorry physically but virtually and also you can think in another perspective this becomes a barrier free tourism people who are physically challenges who cannot travel overseas i think this will be a good approach by the tourism of countries to take initiative to invest on vr tourism products this is a glide into the paradise through immersive virtual reality same that means i am sitting but how i you know like a lot of people they have anxiety or probably they are afraid they are not uh, they do have some uh, health issues they want don't want to go to roller coasters but i think the virtual reality will be an example it can be an alternative or replacement for them to give still an experience in their lifetime this is a very classic example how a virtual interaction through augmented reality can happen in the historical sites because you know like nowadays getting a good tour guide in the heritage sites are very challenging so when i'm going to download the augmented reality app or probably in the sites if you are putting some qr code where people can scan and they can get layer of information because augmented reality is all you are putting a layer of information in one particular place so i think this will be maybe it can be video explaining about the uh, culture or heritage about that particular sites or it can be image gallery or customers experience so many things can be embedded using augmented reality 
So this is what I have told mixed reality experience in Malaysia. Let's have a quick short video. Oh, it's called the Rift. I'm sure you all enjoyed that good video. Uh, even I, I think I was involved in a part of the research done by one of my previous colleague, Dr. Rokshat. Uh, we did a study on uh, this particular experience itself with the students. Uh, not only that, I think the destination now, a lot of destinations, a lot of country, they started creating the 360 degree experience in the tourism websites, like this is an example from Indonesia. I think you can see how the ultimate virtual holidays can be planned. But what, when you see the difference between the previous slide and this slide, it started initially, but it didn't reach very well. So what they have done, they just collaborated with the booking.com. So they started selling these virtual trips, holiday packages using the booking.com. So you, you, we need to understand how the digitalization and innovations and collaborations are going together. Not only that, I think this is an example of how the virtual tools has been integrated through Shopee because Shopee is one of the uh, number one online app, shopping app in Malaysia. So what Malaysian's tourism company they have done, okay, explore Malaysia, but we will sell through the Shopee apps. This is some of the story of old Kuala Lumpur early days like uh, Malacca prayer lane. Okay, so like that modern. So at least when people cannot come to Malaysia, but still they try to access to that, the beauty and the heritage sites of the Malaysia staying alone. So I think it's a whole of an immersive experience, which we can give it to the people. Not only that, I think during the pandemic, uh, there is a triangulation collaboration happened between Shopping Online Company, uh, Malaysian Tourism, and also Malaysian Association of Hotels. So this all, they tried to put, they tried to share their expertise, what we call share economy. So automatically it becomes more digitalized selling platform. In Singapore, you know, like Airbnb those days, it, it was a disruptive market, but during the pandemic, it became a collaborator. It became a partner, Partnership, they started like Airbnb started partnershiping with Singapore Tourism Board. Okay, how we can use the digital platform more collaboratively, sharing digital platforms. And I think this is another very good example of the Marriott Hotel selling the virtual honeymoon trips. I think you will enjoy watching this quick video.
I think this is how the innovation can really give a different experience. It's not only that, I think we all need to start rethinking ourselves, uh, even redesigning the beach experience because of the current pandemic. Not only that, I think this is another example of the Olympic time, how the China uh, really have used the AR for the directions and also to give a lot of uh, steep guidance for the tourists using the multiple languages, smart shopping, short, smart parking, five language, everything. It's a very interesting one. And what is happening during the recent days is the 3D virtual tools. I think it's very important for us to grow our business rapidly with 3D virtual tools. I'm talking about the event industry, running mice. Whenever we say mice, it's a meeting, instant use, I think conference and exhibitions. But if physically it cannot happen, what is an alternative? We have to move forward, right? So I think this is some of the examples how they have done uh, virtually 3D avatars with audios, integrated linkage, creating virtual booth, uh, networking space, and so many things. Not only that, there are so many other innovations happening in the world. This is an example of the smart boxes. If you can a lot of uh, so what you can do is you can do a smart box like local system. Uh, they can access using the digital code or probably QR code. Uh, normally, this is highly used nowadays in the theme parks. Uh, you can put your stuff inside so that you can move around with a minimum uh, carriage, right? Of course, it also can be used in the education uh, for the assignment or to keep the people's kit. And the one on the right, I think the recent one is the UV angel system, which the McDonald in Dallas, they implemented in the ceiling. Uh, what is what really that does that ultraviolet light it will neutralize the pathogens in the air and also in the surfaces so it becomes like a uh, a fighting device for you against the virus and another example on the bottom right is the food panda collaborated with the ST engineering on drone food delivery trials in singapore so how the technology can help i remember during the pandemic in us i think one of the librarian used the drones to distribute the books from library to the rural areas where people cannot access. So let's quickly go through the airlines industry. Yeah, I think the Singapore Airlines, they went very innovatively by rolling out Chris Plus app that brings payment, lifestyle and reward. So what they understand, Singapore Airlines, it's very important for us to provide a seamless experience for our customer rather being standalone, being a silo. Let's collaborate together and create more seamless experience to the tourists coming to Singapore. So this app has more than 150 partners with over 650 outlets in Singapore providing customized dealing with privilege. So in one app, the people have all the privilege benefits, the product service experience, all getting partnered and created in one seamless experience, automatically it gives more uh, smooth experience for the travelers. So the CRISPR, the airline's blockchain system, airline loyalty digital wall, is also integrated into CRIS. So it will be easily enhanced in in-app payment option where the people can choose the loyalty program. So automatically everything integrated and the miles and the points, everything is uh, systematically integrated there. So this is what done in airlines Newsland, short about gaining intelligence in Newsland Airlines. Of course, it's not only just to provide experience at the same time to get more data, like a big data predictive analysis. Okay, so whenever the people are using chatbot, what time they are using, what is their emotions, what kind of text they are using, and what time they have more traffics coming. So all this predictive analysis can be done using the big data analytics, okay, using the chatbots. Not only that, in the airlines industry, they use robots. Uh, not only the hotels, hotels normally we use in the luggage, uh, restaurant we use for waiters, hotel housekeeping also they use. Now they also use in the barista. In the airport, I think mostly they use for directions or maybe view the passengers or travelers more information where is the restaurants, shops, uh, directing them on the gates, a lot of basic information. And uh, one thing what we would like to know, like always, whenever there is a 
a lot of technology integration flourishment comes in a development comes in always will a robot takes your job no definitely not things like manual labor will be done by robots but human can focus more on creative and artistic work they will not lose job instead of create meaningful purpose rather than routines so normally the routine jobs will be given to technology so the brussel airport company what they went innovative i think they created this robotic uh, safety guard uh, kind of a jacket and shuttling services and the last part of our sharing is uh, very quickly on the digital contactless guest experience we all know that marriott is well adapted to this they created their own app for the search booking uh, check in check out mobile keys mobile request chatting log so they put all the customer requirements in one same goes with four season and many hotels and the restaurant for getting in malaysia which is as a capacity of 7000 rooms they put a lot of self service check in process and in 2015 this scandvik hotel is the first hotel in norvik region to go digitalization you can see how the thread desk looks like mobile check in and mobile keys so a lot of integration even have done in the early stage but now only people i think the during pandemic people started to embrace the technology i think these are all some of the new innovation happening in the industry now especially the center table have totally have changed no more like a cruel set of the bird wash or anything now it's more like sanitizers uh, health declaration forms menu qr code so everything is digitalization right even like marriott come with a customized pyramid shape qr code ncf chip which all the site the customer can focus and touchless menus but i think soon lot of player quick service restaurant you will see this perfect sense technology touchless sauce dispenser not only that i think the facial recognition in the airports kiosks this is going to be an uh, it's already happening i think since more than 2 years everybody knows this contactless experience so what i can conclude now i think the history of industry revolution from the 1.0 to 4.0 from the mechanization and the application mass production internet growth digitalization 4.0 but what we are going now is the personalization human augmentation 5.0 industry revolution 5.0 will be focusing more on collaborations between men and machine human intelligence working in harmony with cognitive computing in a simple word i can say like two eyes in a face both are important for a better visibility better survival right so i think by putting human back in the industry production with collaborative robots workers will be upskilled to provide value added tasks in production leading to mass customization and personalization so very in a summary the reshaping the hospitality industry from a digital transformation perspective just my own research on this perspectives i think integration of ai assistant machine learning augmented reality will be the way of the future outsourcing is increasing rapidly biometrics technology instead of personal gadgets using portal technology instead of personal gadgets i think uh, some countries they also started giving the mobiles to the customers 5g speak to order virtual assistants hospitality without technology it's a questionable then cloud and saas software as a service workflow management tools then improved in room hardware as an innovation so what i am sharing now today is just a small drop of knowledge i think uh, we always say that knowledge is the entire ocean so what i am sharing today is just a drop of water in that ocean that one drop is also through my reading and different people's innovation different people's uh, sharing in the common platforms which i summarized or probably i consolidated in today's sharing so i am looking for more knowledge gain during the interaction so i will i also take this opportunity and also gratification to dr hedios sham for inviting me to this wonderful platform uh calvas to share me share my no knowledge and also to learn more from everyone 
So thanks for patiently listening. And I will definitely happy to answer the question at my capacity. And I always say that every day is a new day with new learning. And every new learning will impart new knowledge. Of course, that new knowledge will be the new experience takes you to a new skill. So we always have to stay positive. That's my own way of developed statement, I can say. And you can find me in the contact details, what I've given, sorry. This is my email ID, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And yeah, so the learning should never stop. So let me stop sharing here. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Super Prof, the way you presented, the way you give the examples, the way you were narrating the things, uh, I really loved it so intelligently, so wonderful. You have articulated and the way you started with the video and then you talked about the evolution of it, the role of the AI and the augmented reality, the virtual reality, the way you were explaining all the things was so superb that it kept me so engaged all the time that I could not even uh, uh, wanted to drink a water because I didn't want to uh, waste my time while not listening to you because it was so wonderful and your powerful content, your slides were so superb. They seemed to be very simple, but it were they were heavily loaded and I was looking at the information in con it contained, followed by your own wonderful uh, explanation. I love the concept of heat and your own concept of innovation plus smart technology, which is so wonderful. And the way you explained each and everything was so nice. And I would say that 80% of the question you have already addressed in your own presentation because it was so wonderful. You were explaining everything in so wonderful way, Prof. Uh, and in the last, I loved your the way you concluded that uh, human and technology, these are the two eyes of the face. So very nicely you put everything and that's the beauty of the real expert and, and the person who is a talented like you. They put all things in a so wonderful way that everybody comes to learn it in a very uh, wonderful way, in an easy way. You made things very easy for us and for our audience to learn. And uh, since this video will be on YouTube, people will be getting right guidance about all these things, our, which was super. So congratulations and thank you very much for such a wonderful presentation. And this is what uh, it was already expected because the way you carry out the different conferences, different workshops, the different trainings. Uh, uh, I have been to few of the conferences where you were the key speaker and I listened to you. So I already knew that you are a wonderful person to speak on that. And uh, that's what uh, you proved it once again. Thank you very much for such a wonderful things. But we have certain questions which... Uh, sure, sure. Thank you. Sorry for taking some extra time. Yes, in the presentation. Yes. Uh, because, you know, Prof, you are the expert and whatever you say impact a lot. So people, they, and particularly students, they want your guidance and uh, they want to listen. One part you have already covered, but uh, I would like you to explain it further because uh, sure. uh, you explain it in your presentation, but that needs elaboration. Prof, sure. uh, let me just allow to ask the first question. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay, thank you. The first question is, uh, Prof, please guide us the role of the human in the hospitality industry. You talked about the uh, from the organizational perspective that, yes, it, uh, the technology is making everything easy. But from the employee perspective, we are getting losing the jobs because of the more technology involvement. So what do you recommend to us as employee to advance ourselves in the hospitality industry to secure our jobs? Yes, please, your recommendation. Sure, sure. Thank you. I think this is... Uh... Interesting and one of the common questions whenever we talk about technology integration. Because, of course, we need to understand like hospitality industry always, it's a human-centric department, like human-centric industry. So we need to understand that technology integration here is mainly to enhance the service, okay, number one, and to understand your customer more deeper and assist you to take over the repetitive job so that the human can focus more on human interaction itself. 
because our customer is a human. So when I see, I think one of the slides I was showing on the Singapore restaurant, the robot is bringing the food, but I think there is a human there still to interact with the customer. So I think what I can say, as a human, we have to focus more on in engagement with the customer rather than doing the repetitive job. So where I think the human still will have a value. So when I ask you, for example, like uh, when you take 20 years back, okay, I remember when I did my graduation in mid 90s, we used to learn the carpet cleaning using the brush, manual brush. But when the carpet cleaning machine came, whether it has taken the job of the housekeeping department, it's a question above, right? Still, people are doing the cleaning of the carpet. Only thing, it has been replaced with the machine. That means they become more efficient. And probably it reduces their risk of probably health issues. So what I can advise to the students or probably the, the future leaders, try to integrate the technology in the right place. It don't integrate the technology to create human damages. So you have to blend the human values and the technology integration in a very holistic way. There are certain things technology can do, but it do have a lot of limitations. The technology is a robot or it's a chatbot. The person who's giving the coding or doing the programming is the human. The, te the technology can solve the previous problems. But we are dealing with human. Every time we will have new problems because humans create new problems and new expectations. So I think still we need the human values. So in a simple word, what I can say, the human, let's focus more on uh, exclusiveness and probably more on creativity, more engagement, and let reduce uh, our repetitive job. Let's use the technology mainly for one thing is to for the repetitive job or maybe to use for heavy task like and also number two use the technology to understand your customer more deeper that means to go follow the customer more deeper through the big data analytics predictive analysis then probably use the technology uh, for the safety purpose like a contactless and everything so what i can say definitely we will have human importance in the industry. I would like to conclude this uh, uh, small message for this question. When Henna Hotel in Japan, they went like a robot hotels. They are the pioneer. But I think before the pandemic, what happened? They lay off 240 plus robots in one day because those robots started creating problems. So what it really underlines here whether human or machine, if you're going to be a problem creator rather than problem solver, you will be replaced. So I think the efficiency applies whether it's a human or machine, both are important. I hope I answered the question, Dr. Hayden. Very nicely said, Prof. Wonderfully, uh, you have explained it in a very wonderful way that now uh, they have the understanding what is the importance of human and you have uh, backed whatever you said back by the references and you have given the Japan example, which is wonderful. Uh, and that's what uh, people are expecting that uh, uh, when the expert, they say, they give example and they quote the different things, which is actually we call in research with the references, which is very interesting. And that's the yeah, beauty of research. So they exactly. always give references. Yes. Thank you very so much. Even when you one watch question. my slides, I think whatever yes. data I take, I put always source on the bottom. Exactly. That's why exactly. when I talk about digitalization, I put the word innovation. Yes, true, true. Uh, and uh, I like one thing a lot is uh, there is a lot of uh, statistic were there, analytics were there. Whatever you were saying, whatever you were claiming that were backed by the statistic and analytics. That was so wonderful. Uh, Prof, we have another very important question. Definitely. And uh, this person has emailed us three times to ask you this question, particularly in this session, because he was not sure that he would be in this session live or not. But he uh, requested a lot to uh, have your opinion on that, because since you are the guru, you are the leader in this field of hospitality and tourism. 
that gentleman is doing a PhD in a hospitality industry. But he says that, uh, Prof, please guide me since I'm doing my PhD from one of leading institute from Pakistan. But the problem is that uh, I'm not doing it from the hospitality and tourism department. We do not have the tourism and hospitality department. I have taken this industry and I'm uh, interacting with my supervisor for this thing. I'm in the stage of proposal development. Uh, do you, uh, what do you recommend to me, Prof, that should I continue with my PhD with the same leading institution or should I go to the proper tourism and hospitality department elsewhere and particularly Taylor's University uh, so that I could have the proper guidance and interaction with the people who are actually working in the hospitality industry. Prof, I'm so confused. Please answer to my this question because I need the right guidance at the start of my this PhD. Yes, please. Okay, I think that is a very interesting and a bit challenging question, right? Uh, whether I should do my PhD in the hospitality because yes. if currently the university where I'm attached, they don't have a separate discipline. So exactly. what I can say is, uh, I think all the universities are good university, right? right? Uh, and uh, I think the PhD, I think, I'm just sharing my perspective. I'm sure that I do have a good friends from Pakistan. Like uh, I can definitely, you know, like uh, people like you known to Dr. Faizan and uh, Prof. Chian and what they are doing. In of course, even in our own university, we do have a lot of top researcher like Dr. Syed Mustafa, a uh, lot of other members. So what I can say, the PhD is your own determination, right? And it is a journey which you learn a lot of things. Even my degree, PhD, was in management, but my topic is on hotel industry. Because the university what I, where I did my PhD, they don't have PhD in hospitality. But I did my PhD in management, but I'm very passionate about hospitality. So I tried to convince my guide with a proper proposal. Okay, this is what my industry, this is what was my background. Okay, this is my what was my career pathway. So I need to do my PhD, even though it's a PhD in management, but my topic has to be more focused on hospitality industry and technology oriented. So I did it. So what I can say to that gentleman, I think the future young researcher or probably the future doctor, since you have started, right? I think you have to go through the way. I think don't look back. So you continue a journey. I think we live in a world where the global knowledge is accessible. I can say a good example like Calvus Channel. You're giving a lot of wonderful opportunity for the people to get diverse global knowledge. And even in Taylor's through CRIT and the school, we do a lot of webinars, a lot of research webinars. We will do a lot of networking opportunity for the people to interact. So I think my sincere advice to that uh, PhD scholar, please don't look back, move forward in your life. But mm. focus, because it's your research, you know better than anyone. And if you have a passion in the industry, hospitality, you move forward. Doesn't matter your PhD in management, but your topic can be hospitality and tourism. Mm. Right? So that's my piece of advice. Uh, just as a layman, I'm not like a guru, on, but just I'm sharing my own experience. I did my PhD in management, but my topic is more on hospitality and technology oriented. Yes, very and nice. We have a lot of for... global access. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much for such a wonderful answer. And uh, you have uh, given your own example. That's the beauty of the real expert that they even quote themselves. And you have given your own example. You are doing a fantastic job, a wonderful collaboration. And the names you have taken are really a very, very fine researchers and they are doing a wonderful job. So your advice is so wonderful. They can continue and then they can work very well in the future as well. And Prof, uh, the last question, since you were highly engaged since the morning of this uh, day, and uh, we know that you are uh, already so much tired, but one last question, which comprised of two parts, because they want to wanted to ask the same question from you. First question is, Prof, uh, that uh, gentleman is doing the uh, 
PhD and he said that uh, please ask the prof whether he would be interested in comparison study Pakistan and Malaysian hospitality industry. If yes, then I will be sending and I will be contacting prof regarding the uh, comparison study regarding the hospitality industry of Pakistan and Malaysia. That was the first part. And second part, prof, uh, uh, a lot of students have asked for the new direction and new trends in the hospitality industry for their upcoming PhDs because they say that once they uh, choose the topic after four or five years, it is going to be not that hot topic. So how do you see future of hospitality industry and which topic they should opt for their PhD because it is a long-term project? Yes, your recommendation for them, please. Thank you. Thank you for an interesting uh, question and also like a welcoming question with a, a research collaboration uh, opening. Uh, yes, I think uh, I think the questions are most connected to my PhD itself because my PhD is a comparative study between Malaysia and India. Uh, so I collected data from two different sets on which we have done a comparative analysis. Yes, I think we are always open to research collaborations. Uh, definitely they can reach us. I think they can be easily find me in the social media. Because I think very important is to have some discussion. Okay, what is is research about? Uh, whether it is really applicable at the timely manner. I think that the, I think the a kind of a little bit of discussion will help me to understand its research direction rather than simply saying yes or no. It's not good. So we always should encourage the people to get back to us. We can open short discussions. So what I normally do sometimes, the, especially I used to get a lot of message in LinkedIn and Facebook about the research directions or probably like health or probably like uh, some kind of guidance, uh, even the research collaborations. So I will see the topic and I will ask them to give me a short write-up or synopsis of the research summary, like what is the focus of the research, a small write-up. So that helps me to understand. If it is not really in my area of expertise, instead of saying no, I will try to connect him or her with the right people from my networking. That's what I'm doing. Like I, I try to extend my networking uh, possibilities, wiring them to the people who are coming forward. I think we need to motivate them. Very important. The second question regarding the new topic, I think. Uh, there are a lot of webinars uh, happening across globally, especially on what are the new topics we can focus. I think one of the new areas we can look on the service uh, experience itself, right? So most of the time we are looking on the technology acceptance, adaptions and everything. So probably you can also start to think about a mixed research approach. I think there is a mixed research approach is slowly getting more popularity. Uh, probably people who want to do a new research, maybe you, you can interview the industry people, uh, do a qualitative interview, try to understand what they really want. Probably you can do some topics on skill development, future workforce skill development. So understand what the expectation based on that, probably you can propose some theories or probably you can do some research on the smart tourism destination on your own countries uh, probably more specific i think there are a lot of renowned professors i think even i was reading recent article by prof buhalis i think he talks about the tourism destination and his encyclopedia i think i think there are a lot of renowned or uh, well-known professors in the area of tourism and hospitality try to follow that and like social media pages. They always share a lot of information. And I think social media like LinkedIn, Facebook, there's a lot of doctoral support groups, research groups. So try to join those groups. Try to engage yourself. Uh, make use of the social engagement. So what I can say is social media as a, it's like a two-face in a coin. So you want to take a positive or negative, it's all left to you. If you can use the social media more potentially, productively, I think you can definitely get a lot of information. 
uh, because I learned a lot from the social media, like a lot of information, a lot of updates, new trends, new topics, a lot of professors, a lot of talks. Everything is happening only when you follow the right channel, right pages. The One of the important tasks all of us are having, finding the right search ping platforms. Right? Even though we have, we all engage in the social media, but how you can find the right channel, I think that will be good. So my short answer for the new topics, try to look more on customer focus because people are looking on that customer experience and uh, expectations, uh, re like rebranding the domestic tourism, uh, probably reskilling the workforce, those kind of topics and technology, of course, technology related topics. Probably if you can watch more updates, following some useful websites, pages, I think you get a lot of information. I totally agree. When you choose a topic, try to choose the topic which is futuristic so that when you finish, that becomes the trend. But don't forget that whatever futuristic topic, uh, it has to be, what I can say in a simple word, whatever your topic you are choosing, you should have a strong future support and theoretical support. Yes. So, sitting under the pineapple tree, if you're looking for orange, it's not going to happen. Right? <laughs> so, I think, okay. but what the people are looking nowadays is, okay, whether that plant can give multiple fruit. That's how okay. the expectation of the people have changed. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, Very try to find the right resource. Yeah, that's my mm -hmm. piece of advice to all. Yeah. Very nice answer. Wonderful. Uh, again, I would say that you have articulated uh, very nicely, Prof. Thank you very much for such an elaborative answer. And you have rightly mentioned that it is up to them that uh, whether they want to engage in social media in that uh, right channel or right platforms or they want to engage in something else. It uh, totally depends on us how we are going to take advantage of all these things because it's the world of... Uh, now information and you have to be very selective and choosy for that purpose. Very nicely said, Prof. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, once again for such a wonderful thing. And I love the way you presented everything, the, your energy level. And I'm trying to learn from you that how can we be so energetic having after a long a day of, a hect I would say, hectic day because your schedule was so super tough. And then again, you managed and in a very nice manner, in a wonderful way, you have explained and you have, uh, in a calm way, you have explained and you presented everything. Very nice, Prof. That's why uh, whatever you are, because of your hard work and your struggle, and we can see that you are rising and our best wishes are with you and we want to see you more successful in the field and in the personal life as well, because the world needs people like you who are the real contributor prof thank you very much for whatever you are because we need people like you and prof please share uh, your thoughts on uh, your initiative of uh, bone as well because that is another contribution to the field and world uh, we wish you best of luck for that if you want to speak about that thing with our audience uh, yes uh, please carry on yeah okay i think that recently we have taken an initiative called bone uh, the acronym actually its abbreviation is borderless online research networking mm -hmm. uh, i think we did last week last friday with three of the founders i can say myself from Taylor's university malaysia and we had dr gina from philippines and dr enclera from uh, kosovo so the whole idea of the bond is create a uh, virtual space for the people to collaborate uh, when I say collaboration, it can be on the research publication, joint publication, writing book chapters, or probably jointly organizing events, webinars, seminars. Not only that, probably some guidance, uh, maybe postgraduate research networking. So I think it went on well. Last week with around 80 plus people participated from almost 20 countries. And uh, interestingly, a lot of participants were like directors, principals, and CEOs. And even Dr. Haider also was supporting us as one of the participants. And we did uh, four different five teams. 
uh, hospitality and uh, culinary arts one thing then we did tourism and events and uh, technology and education then we did business and accounting finance then we did a general management so all in the five team we made a breakout room we did lot of discussion what we can do collectively the bond is basically a collective intelligence putting in virtual space to work in a simple word i can say like let's all share learn and grow together so it's a sharing learning from each other at the same time grow together in a global visibility or probably as a global audience or educator i can say so i will share the next born networking will be happening in july but we also plan to do some micro engagements through webinars and sharing sessions i will share the information to dr haydo and also the facebook group link so probably dr haydo can share that in his networking most welcome to join you can look for collaborations there are people from different countries from pakistan from india from sri lanka from indonesia philippines and also from germany we had from italy kosovo we had from poland and i think in february there is one professor planning to do a sharing session so you are most welcome to join and uh, yeah i think that's what i'm doing and also i, I take another role as a associate director for human capitalization in in our center crit which is a center for research and innovation in tourism through this also we do lot of webinars every month i think today also we had a webinar earlier on tourism and sdg 4 which is on quality manage quality education i uh, invited a speaker from uh, australia but currently he lives in norway dr shant so he was sharing about an assessment how can be more quality and how we can work towards globalization so i think yeah as the dr haider mentioned we are taking some initiative uh, we will go slowly stage by stage and i think a lot of other people have taken similar initiative quite long time back also so i think let's collaborate let's learn from each other uh, so i think there is no one in the world knows everything uh, we always have a space to learn to improve and to collaborate thank you so much uh, dr haider and uh, thank you for once again for everyone for listening looking yeah. forward to see you all in our yeah. next born event yes and also sure, the twin sure. events yeah thank you so yes. much yeah thank you very much prof and uh, i was there in the uh, born session and it was so worthy uh, we discussed so many new things the new ideas where we can collaborate where we can learn from each other as you mentioned there is always room for improvement at any stage of life we do need the guidance we do need the collaboration the team work and definitely uh we will be supporting you because what you people are doing is the great job and we are here to serve the humanity to the world to the planet and whatever the contribution we could do we will be definitely doing it our whole support are with you thank you dr kendapan for your wonderful initiatives and wonderful work you are doing and uh, in the last prof what is your message to the world as a teacher professor researcher trainer learner professional and educator yes please yeah i think uh, for me it's only two words um try to focus on collaboration and networking mm. like i say two eyes in a face yes. so i think collaboration and networking will help you to learn more uh, mm. to unleash your potential and probably it will take you to the next stage in your career path uh, that's mm. my short message to everyone Yes prof thank you very much it's a very short but it's a very heavy loaded message to the world and it contains so many thing because uh, we need collaboration and networking to grow appropriately uh, very nicely said prof in the end i would say indeed uh, learn about the digital transformation in hospitality industry uh, we need to prepare ourselves when we need to see where the future trends are going so do follow the distinguished guest speaker through his research work and you can email him for future learning and guidance he is very generous and always ready to help the people moreover wonderful explanation and powerful content which the great speaker has already elaborated will help you 
to learn and develop. So that is all we have time for today. Thank you once again, Dr. Kandapan uh, Bala, uh, Bala Supremarium. And uh, I would also like to thank our audience who joined us. If you have any additional questions regarding the information shared today, please email to us or connect with the speaker directly through his email address or social media account. Thank you all for your support and liking our session. Stay tuned as many sessions are on the way. Please do not miss any session. Until next session, take care of yourself.